Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2014 Korean action crime movie called The Divine Move. This movie tells the story of a Go professional player that is trapped in a gangster circle which leads him into prison. So, how does he escape from the prison? Can he get revenge? Let's find out together. At the start, there is a professional Go player called Taisuk who is greeted and cheered by his brother because he lost his last game. Not quite there, brother asks Taisuk to play a guidance game with him, who is dabbling to gambling with his life at stake. Taisuk tries to escape and begs brother not to join this match, yet brother insists on doing it. On the other hand, brother's opponent, player, is using a girl named Naval as a shadow player as well. At that time, heavy rain pours all over the place and messes up the radio frequency. Brother picks a wrong move and loses on the hand of player. As a result, brother is being tortured by player, Atari, Kibitsa, and Killer who is the leader of the gang. Taisuk is also dragged in by Killer's henchmen to have another go match with Killer to save brother's life. Can't concentrate seeing brothers being tortured, Taisuk loses it and also gets beaten up by the gang. They kill brother and even make up the crime scene as if Taisuk killed him until Taisuk is thrown in the prison. Day by day, in the prison, Taisuk observes that there is a gangster boss who is struggling to get free time by winning a go match with the warden. Taisuk lends his hand to compete with the warden so boss can get his free time. On the flip side, boss needs to teach him how to fight in return. Need not be doubted, Taisuk wins the game with the warden so he grants boss free time, but he puts Taisuk into a solitary cell for he sees Taisuk is being cocky. In the solitary cell, Taisuk finds a paper inside his rice containing an invitation to play Go from his neighbor. They communicate and play Go by thumping the wall, without knowing one another's identity. Until Taisuk is released from the solitary cell, he realizes that he played with a master who plays blind Go. From there on, Taisuk starts his boot camp with boss to learn how to fight. After some training, Taisuk becomes a master fighter and even gains respect from the other prisoners. Boss is really impressed with Taisuk's dedication and even after he is released from the prison, Boss gives him a big amount of money for revenge. Finally, Taisuk is free and starts to plan his strategy against Killer. On the other hand, Killer is still doing his illegal Go gambling business. In this place, he has a shadow player to make the rich gambler go bankrupt only in a month. On the following day, Taisuk goes to a small Go gambling place where Atari is betting. He acts like a newbie player and invites Atari to play with him. He is deliberately being a pushover, so Atari will take his bait and change the bet with flicks on the head. In the last match, Taisuk wins it by half territory. In order to keep his promise, Atari pays off the bet with 10 flicks on the head. Taisuk blows his knuckles hard and annoys Atari so they come into a fight. Taisuk can counter Atari and ties him on a pillar. Taisuk reveals himself as brother's sibling who Atari has snapped his head and asked him to eat the Go Stone to death before. So now, Taisuk recreates what Atari has done with stuffing his mouth with a handful of Go Stones and destroys both of his eyes and skull with only using his knuckles. On the other day, Taisuk finds brother's gambling friend, Cheetah, and asks him to join the force to get revenge on Killer and the gang. Although initially, he refuses the offer, he immediately comes back to join with him when he is promised loads of money. Not long after that, Taisuk also scouts an old blind man called Lord and his long-lost best friend, Carpenter, who also holds a grudge toward Killer. They start planning the strategy and spying on the targets. Taisuk starts the move from Naval and comes by to her bar. Turns out, Taisuk who disguises himself as a math professor falls in love with Naval. Meanwhile, to keep everything on track, Carpenter makes sophisticated tools for the guidance game so they won't need radio anymore. The team also makes Cheetah disguised as CEO of a porn star agency. Then, Cheetah comes to the killer's gambling place and acts as if he is low in skill but high in pride. He acts flawlessly as someone frustrated for losing lots of games and draws players' attention. Afterward, Cheetah comes to this place confidently since he has already had a shadow player which is Lord. His opponent is furious and suspects him for being a trickster. 
the security searches on him thoroughly and can't find anything as he has already thrown the tool on the ashtray and is picked up by a hunchback who is his acquaintance. It creates a chaotic situation and the opponent is being knocked by player. As an apology, player invites him to join a VIP game with him. Cheetah accepts the offer and wins the match as player uses it as a lure to drain Cheetah's money so he can play another game with a bigger bet. Cheetah accepts another rematch with player for he knows, it is player who catches the bait. Soon after, they play inside Cheetah's truck, a fake place for shooting the adult videos. Cheetah comes out from the truck for a quick break and player searches from top to bottom to make sure there are no tools for any shadow player to communicate. He finds nothing as Carpenter has already upgraded the tools. The board itself connects to their screen so every move can be traced without a camera and to communicate he uses a small electrocute tool underneath Cheetah's feet. Without the slightest chance, player loses his game and notices that he has been played by Cheetah all this time. He leaves hastily to Kitbizer's office and forces Kitbizer to help him against Cheetah. Even with the assistance of Kitbizer, they still lost the game. Player loses his control and tries to kill Cheetah. It is when Taisuk barges into fight with Player. In the meantime, Kitbizer, who runs away, is being chased by Carpenter and Lord. Kitbizer is successfully captured by them and Player becomes unconscious in the hand of Taisuk. Later, Taisuk brings player to a freezer storage room to play another Go match, the winner will be able to leave the room. Player who is in pain and can't think on the move decides to fight with Taisuk one more time with his last energy. Player is beaten by Taisuk for sure, so Taisuk leaves him in the freezer with a piece of paper consisting of a Go puzzle that he needs to solve to open the locked door. Player can't solve it and freezes to death. Player's death draws Killer's attention to Taisuk and accepts Taisuk's challenge for a proper Go match. But before that, Taisuk asks Killer to open the cabinet. Then, he finds Atari's corpse as well. Not only that, Taisuk instructs Killer to go to Kitbizer's office. There, they find Kitbizer and force him to have a match with Taisuk just like his order. If Kitbizer loses, they need to cut off his tongue and kill him. Initially, Kitbizer was confident that he would win the battle. Comes out, then he takes the bait of the trap move, and loses. He dies in the hands of Killer in Taisuk's smart game. The next day, before the final execution, Lord wants to visit his daughter to let her know that he will live in honor and asks Cheetah to help him dress up. On the way to Lord's daughter's house, they are kidnapped by Killer's henchmen because Hunchback snitches Cheetah's location for another buck of money. At that moment, they are escorted to Killer's residence. Killer asks Cheetah to solve the puzzle that Taisuk has given to Player. He needs to solve it only with three chances and every time he gives a wrong answer, Killer will cut his finger. Obviously, Cheetah can't answer it without his trick so Killer asks him to do a proper go match with his messed up body. Can't stand it, Lord voluntarily exchanges his position with Cheetah, betting his life on playing blind go and only relying on his memory because Killer doesn't have the board for a blind man. Unfortunately, Killer has a shadow player which is girl and she plays flawlessly with unexpected moves. Lord who is aware of it starts to attack Killer because he knows he will lose the game no matter what. However, Lord is way much more vulnerable than Killer, ends up he is the one who is being tortured. Not long after that, Taisuk and Carpenter arrive to save Lord first and will be back to save Cheetah's life as well. Lord who is in critical condition uses all his strength to inform Taisuk that Killer has a child as a shadow player so the move is unpredicted and very pure. Even though they had given their best effort to save Lord, he passed away just like that. Back at the residence, Killer threatens Naval, who he has suspected of falling in love with Taisuk, to play well or else he will kill Naval. Shortly afterward, Taisuk comes back to save Cheetah and Naval, then gets his revenge for the sake of brother and his friends. They start the match and Naval starts to move to sabotage the game until it becomes a draw. Killer realizes he is being played by Naval so he asks to bring out Naval to stab her in front of Taisuk. Eventually, a fight can't be avoided anymore. It is an intense fight until Taisuk gets stabbed in his abdomen.
Fortunately, he wears protection so he can turn the situation around and win the fight. At last, he attaches killer hand on the go board with a knife just like how he did to Lord. In the end, Taisuk gets all he ever wanted, revenge, money, and a family. He also shares the money with Lord's daughter, brother's son, and even visits Carpenter daily. Later on, he departs to Busan with Cheetah, Naval, and Girl to find the master of Go that he played with back in his prison days and so their life goes on. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.